Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Um, I'm Alejandra Gonzalez Beltran, um, and I'm going to be talking about a project we were involved uh, around a fair data pipeline. Um, I lead the data and software engineering group in scientific computing uh, at SDFC um, in, in the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. We mainly work with the facilities on campus, but we also uh, contribute to other projects like this one I'm going to mention that it relates um, to epidemiological models in uh, starting from COVID but potentially uh, anything else. So um, why did we start this project? So as everyone knows um, COVID-19 uh, was declared as a pandemic in 2020 and at the time, uh, lots of people came together to do work on understanding and combat the spread of the disease, um, aiming to improve the processes in healthcare as well as public health policy. Uh, and these teams really needed to be interdisciplinary. So the Scottish COVID Response Consortium, which uh, it's composed of epidemiologists, mathematical modelers, data scientists, data policy experts, as well as software engineers and other scientists um, came together and uh, through the rapid assistance in modeling of the pandemic that was coordinated uh, by the Royal Society. So there was a, a large group of people starting to contribute on that. And actually our group came in uh, later um, on a continuation that was funded by STFC um, on what we call open epidemiology for pandemic modeling, transparent, traceable, reusable open source pipeline for reproducible science. So what was the intention? Um, we wanted to provide a pipeline which is open, open source and publicly accessible and provides a chain of trust to connect transparently the primary data with the research outputs. Uh, via open source and publicly accessible analysis and modeling code. So this is all to be able to track back any policy decisions to the primary data that uh, that provides the evidence. That's, that's the basic idea. So um, why we needed this? Uh, so epidemiological modelers work with a variety of programming languages. Uh, to describe and analyze their models. Here you can see some examples of those programming languages. So basically we needed a pipeline that supported models written in, in multiple languages. Also, uh, we need to read and write data and we wanted to keep a registry component uh, to keep information about the data. And of course, very important is also to keep provenance information uh, about the data, so how the data has come into existence, uh, reflecting all of the entities, activities, and people that are involved in producing a piece of data. Uh, so having this information allows us to assess the quality of the data, its reliability and trustworthiness, uh, and especially for the outputs of the models is where we want to see uh, the full trace uh, to the primary data. Another requirement of the group of epidemiologists that we that work with and we're working in this project is that uh, they needed a common line component. The way they use um, the, the systems and how they run their models requires that. Uh, and also um, the data is sometimes distributed. So we allowed for a local registry for each uh, modeler as well as a central registry that people could synchronize the data too. Uh, and also uh, it was important to package all of the information uh, relevant to a model in a way that could be shared uh, with others. So what did we do to address this? Is we did consider the, the FAIR data principles of FAIR for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. Uh, so we wanted a the pipeline to support the different languages. So there are APIs for the different languages. Uh, in terms of reading and writing the data, we relied on standard formats like JSON and JSON-LD, 
persistent identifiers and descriptions of the data based on standards, in particular the W3C data catalog vocabulary, um, for which I've been involved um, as a co-editor. Um, we also, the, in terms of the provenance information, we relied on standards and in particular W3C prov vocabulary that allows you to represent exactly this relationship between entities, activities, and the people or agents involved in producing the data. Uh, and in terms of the packaging of information, we also implemented this in Arrow Crate. Uh, that is a way of packaging the data and having all of this uh, together in a way that can be shared. So uh, this diagram shows um, a bit how the, the pipeline works uh, in terms of uh, the, the different workflows. So as I uh, mentioned, we the requirements were around supporting reproducibility and especially traceability of the data um, so that we could also validate the different models. It is fully open source. I have the links um, in some of the slides, I believe. Um, and it, uh, it's based on the principle of openness and making the data fair. So as you can see here, we are assuming that the data can come from external sources or data repositories, and there is a local registry, as I said, that can be synced to a remote registry. And the epidemiologists will have their different models um, written in, in the different languages and rely on APIs uh, to interact with the registry. And everything is tracked, it relies on on GitHub and GitHub commits. So we are assuming that the code lives on, on GitHub, for example. So um, this is uh, once you run a model and, um, and you have the information about the different objects, it is possible to produce a diagram similar to, to this. I mean, uh, uh, this is one of the examples uh, in which you can see that we keep um, I mean, this is only an example, but the idea is that each entity has its persistent identifier, like a person would have an ORCID ID. Um, and here you can track how the, the specific code was run, uh, producing different data products. Uh, so this is the representation based on PROV and DCAT that I mentioned. On the RSC conference last year, there was a walkthrough, and so you can visit that. And I put the link to the to the video as well as the GitHub repo that contains all the code. Basically, there is a Docker container with Jupyter notebooks to to play with this on your own time. And um, all of this work has was published within a special issue of the Royal Society uh, that looked at all of the technical challenges of modeling uh, real life epidemics and examples of overcoming this. And our paper on the fair data pipeline is available there. Again, I, you have the DOI and um, you are welcome to, to have a look. With that, of course, this work involves many people uh, from the Scottish COVID response consortium. Here you have the list of uh, people involved in the, in the fair data pipeline and um, you can find all of the information on on GitHub. So that's all. So yeah, I welcome any questions. <laughs>